As you guys know, I have been going down the rabbit hole of the Vive Focus Vision. We took a look at the full body trackers and now it's time to take a look at the face tracker. The most part specific piece to this uh, setup. And once I have this installed and set up, I will have everything HTC sells to give you the best VR experience on this headset. So, uh, let's see if this $100 upgrade is actually worth it. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie. You're watching Greater Than Pi. And uh, thank you so much for watching this series. It's been a really fun one for me because I haven't really done a deep dive into a VR headset since the index. And uh, well, let's just say I've had some interesting stuff happen with this headset. We've got a fix video. We've got the full body tracking video where I ended up buying five trackers. So this is the last thing that HTC sells. And this is actually headset dependent. This is specifically the face tracker for the Vive Focus Vision and the Vive Focus 3. Now they do actually have another tracker for the XR Elite, but it kind of makes it look like you've added a Squidward nose to the headset. <laughs> it's a little silly looking, but it comes with eye tracking. So that's, that's kind of cool. And you can actually upgrade, I found out, the Vive Focus 3 with a eye tracker. But this is the only one of those three headsets that has direct display port, which as you can see, on my headset is already set up because that's permanently set up like this at all times. So let's take a look at this box. It's not really, uh, oh, that's a tamper seal is what that is. Not much to it. I've noticed in every single one of these videos that HTC has been using nothing but cardboard for all of their packing material and I dig it. It is so nice to just be able to recycle every single piece that comes off of these. This is literally it though. <laughs> now let me just, I want to damage the USB-C connection on this. And then there's some paper. And that's it. So as you can see, there is a camera module right here. This one's actually going to track your face. And the way that this works in, this is why it's headset specific. There's actually a secret bay on the headset. And this just hooks right on in to that. A bit tricky. There we go. And just like that, face tracker is installed and ready to go. They really did design that to kind of just not get removed very frequently. I'll have to stash this in my uh, little stash of uh, parts so I don't lose it. Um, I would be a little bit nervous if my headset actually sat like that because that is gonna put some pressure on it, but uh, it's not much. So I, I guess really it's not that big of a deal. My headset hangs uh, from the pegboard, so I'm not gonna worry too, too much about that USB-C connection getting banged around too much. But it's installed now, and uh, I gotta get it on the computer to actually use it. I mean, that was pretty easy. Uh, but let's see how complicated the setup is, because I've heard that it's not as straightforward as, well, just plugging it in and making it work like the Vibe Trackers. So let's do that. All right, guys, I've got it working, uh, but I figured I should probably explain the setup process because this took a while for me to get completely set up. The uh, character you're actually seeing on screen is actually going to be the same one in VR chat as is here. And that's because that was a whole venture that I went on just to get this working. Um, so essentially you need three things in order to make this work. One, the headset that has a face tracking module, which we just installed. You're going to need this piece of software. It's called VRC face tracking. And this is to communicate between the headset and VR chat. So in VR chat, there's actually another thing called OSC settings that you're going to have to enable. And what happens is this software will communicate with OSC and that will then do the face tracking on the character. Complicated? Yes. The third thing you need is an avatar that actually has face tracking. So it's, <laughs> it's a lot of steps just to get it working in VR chat. The other thing is you do need to actually install 
the correct version of tracking data into VRC face tracking. That's a little bit tricky, uh, but fortunately, I actually got the package directly from HTC off of their website. So they actually fully expect you to be using this application and uh, actually support it, which it's kind of cool on HTC side, but uh, a little bit complicated to get set up at first. Luckily, when it comes to getting the face tracker recognized by the headset and all that stuff, it's all automatic. So you don't really have to do much there. It's just plug it in. The streaming software will pass the data directly on using you know the Vive streaming software. And then that will pretty much send the data to here and here to VR chat. Got it. <laughs> it's it's weird, but it uh it does work. It, 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 like with band-aids, but it works. Okay guys, I am here in VR and I've got my full body tracking set up along with face tracking and an avatar that can use face tracking that isn't uh, a public avatar. So while I wish it were just plug and play, find the right avatar and you're good to go, it's unfortunately not. Additionally, and this is kind of the real problem here, there is a lot of limitations on whether or not an avatar will work with face tracking. It's complicated to say the least. The fact that I have this character standing here is the testament of all the work that I put forward to make it happen. And I still did not put forward as much work as the people who built the original model for this, created the code for the face tracking and made it an easy to enable plugin. And then I did the rest of the assembly, kind of like a PC build of all things. But the point is, while this character existing was a lot of work on my side, it's still fairly limited on what you can and can't do. For example, if you wanted to play as a male character, I don't know if there are all that many that actually have face tracking. And you can probably implement it yourself, but I spent hours and days just trying to figure it out. But the point is the face tracking, which is the point of this video, it works. And as you can see, I can do things like stick out my tongue. I can actually move the tongue left and right. I don't know how useful that would be. There's like little movements. Like I can move um, the face, kind of like scrunch it up and like move it left and right as well. There's like cheek puffing. All sorts of little things that when you add them in with the uh, eye tracking, the character just kind of comes to life. And that's kind of the point of this. This is another level of connection to your character and another level of immersion to your character. So uh, the way that I often look at it is when someone first gets into, say, VR chat, they get the ability to play a character through a first person view, right? This is like any first person game. You control it keyboard and mouse. You control it like any other character. You're not really the character. You're just playing the character. By the time you move into VR and you have at least the hands and the head and the little tiny bits of movement, you've started to control the character, but it's more like puppeting the character. You then get full body tracking. It starts to track your elbows, your legs, your waist. And all of a sudden the character starts to move and act a little bit more like you. And then this is the final step in which your eyes, the gaze in which you are actually experiencing what you're looking at, what your face is doing is being tracked and shown through your character. No longer are you just using hand symbols to control your facial expressions. Your expressions are here. It's natural, it's normal. And it takes you even further into this weird digital sea. And as an experience, it's crazy to become a character with this much detail. And that is why I'm a little bit disappointed. Not in this product, but rather in HTC. You see, this is freaking awesome. And HTC has been at the forefront of full body tracking and face tracking since the beginning of these headsets and their original headset and vibe trackers. But the problem is that to do this face tracking, 
You need specific headsets. You need specific modules. And unfortunately, while HTC did make one that was universal and did work on multiple headsets, doesn't exist anymore. They discontinued it. And now you can either buy the one for the Vive Focus Vision and Vive Focus 3, which is this one right here, or you can buy the one for the XR Elite, which is their other flagship headset. And that's all they're currently manufacturing. And the reason that this sucks is because this doesn't. Yeah, there's limitations. There's a lot of work that goes into it, but that would go away. So when it comes down to it, I really think that the biggest disappointment in this is just how limited it really is. I think HTC should consider their stance as the forerunners of this technology and could possibly make this just as big of a staple in this community as full body tracking is today. You know when a user has full body tracking and it's something that a lot of us strive to do. And with face tracking, it's another step forward, but it's limited entirely by one company. Oh, uh, maybe two. I think Meta had face tracking working, but they stopped because it was expensive and not a lot of people were making avatars with it. So yes, it's very, very cool. I do really, really like it. And it works almost without conflict, but I wish that more people could experience it. And that is where I'm going to end it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, you consider giving a like, maybe comment and subscribe. And if you want to see more with this avatar, I am going to be doing a making of this avatar on my third channel, which is going to be a gaming focused channel, where we're going to actually do similar content to greater than Pi, but more focused towards gaming. In fact, I'm already working towards doing a video about the Nintendo Switch 2. So that might or might not be out yet. I don't know. I'm still working on stuff. Um, and if it is, then you'll be able to check her out over there. Uh, if not, I will make a community post when it finally launches. So I'll see you in the next video, probably more IRL than this, but who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll come back like this every once in a while for various VR related things. I know that I want to take a look at a piece of equipment that recently has come out. It's a little bit expensive, but not it's not the end of the world in expense, but it looks like it's supposed to be finger tracking that should work with my vibe trackers that I'm using on my elbows uh, to possibly give more accurate tracking using, of course, the vibe trackers and the uh, finger tracking through it. So we'll see if that ends up panning out uh, or if it even works at all, because it might be one of those things that unfortunately requires the old vibe trackers, which I do have. But that would mean that I'm going to have to calibrate the two play spaces. And right now I don't have to do that. So we'll see. But if it does happen, I'll let you guys, well, I won't let you guys know. I'll show you guys. <laughs> so I'll see you in the next video. Wolfie, out.